recording this computer. Okay, Victor, Victor Arevalo, how do you call, do you work from home office, Victor? Mm -hmm. Well, I I live in Lima, but now I stay in Morelia. That's okay. it's the home, but okay. I live. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Okay, Itzel, as long as I remember, you were working in home office, right, Itzel? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and how did you cope with, I mean, the problems of working in home office? I mean, stress or maybe not stress, let's say depression, right? It's a common thing when you are working in home office. Do you, do you experience depression, I mean, or something like that, Itzel? Or how do you cope with that? Maybe at the beginning, because this was um, difficult because I, I work in my, in my room and so it's difficult to change your, your time for, for work or your, your time for relax. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. We, we well, me. We, or our team in, in Morelia or for, for the, the senior police team uh, works night to them. And it's difficult to, to say, okay, it's 10, 10 o'clock, seven o'clock, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, I need to finish my, my work. No, you need to continue with your- Exactly. Uh, yeah. With your, mm -hmm. pen. I, don't, I don't know how to use your pendings or your, uh, tus pendientes. Yeah. I can't remember. That's a good idea. Your pending work. No, your, I forgot the word. Your pendientes. Okay, we can look it up. That's a good word to look up. Okay, word reference. Uh, pendiente. Slopes. No. Come on. Slopes. Slopes. Pendiente. Could be. Pending, but yeah, pending is like an adjective, but we want the noun pendiente de erring. No, pendiente no, este no, cuesta trampa. Slope, slope. A ver, let, maybe your slopes. Uh, pendiente, no, a slope is una pendiente así de subir. <laughs> okay, Another, that slope pending. Like I can't to do stuff like pendientes. My like pendiente. a list to do, como los pendientes. Ah, a list to do, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe can there was be, uh, earrings. No, earrings es pendientes de, de estos. De, uh, de, ah, okay. De los, eh, de los aretes. Hey, you, you list to do, no, it's your, I, to do work. I can't remember the phrase for pendientes. There was a word but I can't remember now. So we need to look it up later. But yeah, uh, okay, it's uh, so yeah. Well, the, the list of the, the, the and, and, and this is difficult for me and I try to separate uh, the time mm -hmm. because I live with my family and it's difficult because uh, for example, my mom say me all the time, uh, you don't have time to talk with us or, <laughs> or mm -hmm. like that. And, and it's difficult to try to separate the time to work and to personal time or, mm -hmm. yeah, we'll spend time with your, with your family or with your friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. That's a good topic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And okay. Isaac, are you there? Good morning. How are you doing? Hi, teacher. Yes, teacher. Uh, fine, and you? Doing great. Okay, Isaac, tell me, do you work from home office? Yes, I do. Okay, and how do you cope with, uh, with depression or what it said about uh, spending more time at work than you should? How do you cope with that? How do you, how do you deal with those problems? Mm, yes, uh, maybe uh, talk with my team because uh, maybe when I feel that I have uh, mo much uh, work, 
mm -hmm. I talk with my boss or I talk my, with my uh, team to help me. And maybe with depression and difference uh, that don't have a uh, contact with the uh, other people, uh, I have, uh, for example, I take course in different uh, university or in my university, uh, and I try to this course. Uh, b b uh, this course is a uh, presential, okay. Because I think I need to talk with the other people and not only is the work, work, work. Because mm -hmm. it's important to uh, live my uh, my life and have a social, uh, a social, uh, yes, a, a social life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly, all right. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Rebecca, Rebecca, how do you cope with those problems we are discussing? How, how, what? How do you cope or how do you deal? How do you cope? It's like this, how do you, how do you cope with? Como lidias con? How do you cope with? And oh, how do you deal with? Oh, okay. I didn't know this one. Um, I go to therapy. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like therapy. And I go to, and I like to go to the gym. So all the stress is like, um, o sea, como que lo saco, vaya. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you ever feel alone when you're working at home? I mean, what are the problems you face of working from home office? No, I really like it to to stay alone because I'm uh, uh, yes, a lonely people because I like to do my coffee and it's like my thing in the morning and. Um, and in my house is like, yeah, no one uh, wait, awake. I, I don't know how to say. Como se despiertan temprano. They wake up awake early. early. Uh, they... Wake up early. So I like the, um, the moment or como el momento para mí de hacer un cafecito y así. Okay. All right. Okay. So uh, you don't see any problem of working from home. It's fine for you. Yes, I love it. Okay, all right, yeah. Some people tell me, ah, you're a lucky guy. I mean, you work from home. You don't have to worry of, you know, being in public transport or deal with a, a annoying co-worker. I mean, you're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> you're on your own. Yeah. You don't have to deal with people. And yeah, I mean, they are right in that part because I didn't have to deal with, you know, annoying co-workers or something like that. But at the my same time- uh -huh. My co-worker is my dog, so it's <laughs> <laughs> okay so you get along with your co-worker quite well which is fine okay yeah so you know we have advantages and disadvantages and disadvantages up and ups and downs that like they say right ups and downs means oh, vienen cosas buenas y cosas malas mm -hmm. gusta. all right so okay we're going to move on before you begin it says look at the pictures what do you keep in these places? Are you a pack rat? Do you have, do you hate to throw things away? Are you a pack rat? Okay, a pack rat, I mean, it's, uh, if I'm not wrong, pack rat. Es alguien que guarda muchas cosas. Cachivachero. Uh -huh. Alguien que, que guarda muchas cosas. Uh -huh. Que no necesita, por cierto. O sea, es, es, pues eso. Una persona que guarda muchas cosas. Are you a pack rat? Do you hate to throw things away? Okay, that's a good question, which has to do with attachment, you know? Attachment means uh, apego, right? Attach, attachment. Attachment means apego. So do you have attachment to your things? By the, by the way, Jose, do you have attachment for your things? Or not so much? Uh, no, uh, maybe not. No? Right, so you can you don't have a lot of things at home. Um, no, uh, maybe only uh, okay. I, I cannot hear you. Uh, okay, can you hear me? Uh, 
no, no se escucha. Um, yeah. uh, kind of. Okay. Uh, I see. Uh, maybe uh, just like a uh, uh, books and plants. Okay. So mm -hmm. All right. So, yeah, you can say strong attachment to. If you say I have a strong attachment to my things, tengo un apego muy grande por a strong attachment to, or to have a strong attachment. If you say something like this, I have a strong attachment to my to my stuff. Tengo un, un apego muy grande por las cosas. Que recuerden, at, attachment, you can have attachment to people and things, right? So uh, that's normal. I mean, that's not like uh, sickness or, or something, but, um, you know, do you hate to throw things away? Throw away. What is throw away, Jorge? Do you remember? Throw away. What is that, Jorge? That verb. Throw away? Throw away. This one. Um... Como ir hacia este lugar, bueno, ir hacia este. Mm -hmm. oh. Not exactly. Throw away my things, for, ex for example, or my stuff. Mm -hmm. Víctor Arevalo, do you know the meaning of throw away? Eh, sería como desligarse o dejar atrás. Ándale, ¿sí? como descartar, tirar, o sea, hacer claro, a un lado. ¿no? Sí. Mm -hmm. Throw away my stuff. So you need to throw away. You can use throw away when you want to say discard. Discard means descartar, right? Nah, descartar, hacerlo a un lado. No, no, ya no prestar la atención, no usarlo. That's throw away. Okay. All right. So we're going to move on to the next thing. And it says here, spring cleaning. Okay. All right. So spring cleaning says here. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're going to practice this conversation, right? But first, first, there is so much stuff in here. Okay, stuff. Remember, stuff means cosas. ¿no? Cosas. Hay muchas cosas aquí. So much stuff in here. Really ours? I mean, whose bathing suit is this? Oh, okay. Okay, so it said you're going to be Sandra, all right? And Victor Soto, you're going to be John. So when you read, first try to pay attention to the connected speech as usual. So okay, let me do this uh, like this. Okay, all right. So so much stuff, so much stuff, much stuff. Not much stuff, much stuff. No, much stuff, much stuff in here. Stuffing, much stuff in here. Are all these? Are all these things? Are all. Also, I guess there so. There so exactly there so. Mm -hmm. These things really ours. I mean, whose bathing suit is this? Suit is suit is this? Is it ours? No, is it yours or your grandmother's? Hey, it's mine and I like it. It says here. Huh? Mm -hmm. And whose clothes? Whose clothes yours are? Sorry. Maybe yours or yours off? Uh, oh, yours, yours off. Mm -hmm. Is it yours off? Is it yours of your grandmother's? Yeah. Yeah, it's mine. I like it. Whose clothes are these? Okay. She's storing. She's, remember, not she. she's storing, you know, she's storing. She's storing some things here while she's away. She's away. The yearly, the yearly's hers too. Mm -hmm. So look at, look at these awful, these awful earrings, these awful earrings. You're gonna connect these three words if you want. Mm -hmm. Look at these awful, these awful earrings. Okay, she has such a weird taste, but those are yours. Those are, those are yours. I bought them for you. Okay, you can say, are, are yours, are yours. Those are yours. I bought them for you. Oh, you did. Sorry, I guess they are not so bad. <laughs> okay. All right. So, mm, so Victor Soto, you're going to be John and uh, 
it said you're going to be Sandra. Okay, so you can start reading if you want. Well, you know, there's so much stuff in here. Are all these things really ours? I mean, who's waiting, sweetie? Is, it, is this? Is it your sir? Is it your sir? Your grandmother's? Hey, it's mine, and I like it. <laughs> and whose clothes are these? Um, there's my sister's. She's starting some things where while she's away. The girl is hers too. Um, look at these awful earrings. She has such weird taste. But those are yours? I bought them for you. Um, you did? Sorry, I guess they're not so bad. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So in this one, by the way, when you have or, yeah. you have two options. You can say, is it yours or your grandmother's? Mm -hmm. I but guess or, the most clearly separate mm -hmm. this. Exactly. Yeah. Or you can separate or. The same with N. The same goes with N. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or in N, you can two options. You can connect them if you want, or you can make a pause and say, okay, is it yours or... Es como decir en español, ah, ¿son tuyos? O sea, puedes alargarlo, ¿no? Lo mismo con N, recuerden, a veces la gente cuando está hablando, ah, pues sí, fíjate que fuimos aquí y tuvimos mucho bla, 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 ¿no? Cuando lo dicen rápido, pues sí lo conectan, pero a veces pueden decir, ah, pues fíjate que fuimos aquí y, y no pudimos encontrar lo que buscábamos. Entonces es lo mismo, ¿sale? Con yours o con end. And I like it. Sometimes you can connect it if you want it. You can say, and I and I like it. So, hey, it's mine, and I like it. Or you can say, hey, it's mine, and I like it. Mm -hmm. You have two options. Okay, so, Rebecca, you are going to be Sandra again, and Jose, you're going to be John. So, how would you read this conversation? Hey. Uh, there is so much stuff in here. Are all these things really ours? I mean, uh, whose parent suit is this? Is it yours or your grandmother's? Hey, it's mine and I like it. And whose clothes has the, who, uh, whose clothes are this? Oh, they they are my sisters. She is stunning. Some things we wait a minute. Some things here while she she is away. The jewel is hers too. Um, look at these awful earrings. She has such a weird taste. Uh, but those are yours. I bought them for you. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Rebecca, you are in mute. Yeah, Rebecca, leave it. Leave the meat. Sabe que, que esa conversación en Estados Unidos, en México, no hubiese. No hubiese. ¿Cómo? Preguntarle si la ropa era de la abuela ya iba lista. <risa> sí, sí. All 911. Sorry, my, my, mi micrófono desapareció y no lo encontraba. Este, <risa> lo termino. Oh, you did? Sorry, I guess they're not so bad. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So. Okay, Isaac, how would you say, again, this part right here? Um, ah, okay, okay. ¿Cómo dirías eso, Isaac? Yes, teacher. Uh, look at this, uh, this awful. Uh, look at this, this, so, this awful. Uh, this awful. This awful. This look awful at hearing. this awful. Acuérdense que el connected speech es diso, o sea, el último fonema en dis es s. Ahora tengo que esta e no suena. Entonces dimos diso, aquí está el sofu, sofuli. Ahora esta l se la arranco y lo pego con lo que sigue y digo li, ¿no? Disofuli. ¿Cómo dirías eso, Isaac? Disofuli. Yes, teacher. Uh, Disofuli lyrics. 
Soft earrings. Uh -huh. Soft earrings. Exactly. Uh -huh. Aquí también, como ya vimos, ¿no? She's a, acuérdense que con este speech es arran le arranco el último fonema consonante y se lo pego aquí, ¿no? A lo que sigue después, que comienza con vocal. Entonces, ok. Jorge. Jorge, ¿cómo dirías? She's away. She's away. Jorge, are you there? Maybe not. No, Jorge, ok. Sería lo mismo con she's storing some. She's, she's storing. She's storing. Ajá. Aquí recuerden, aquí está un poco más, bueno, es un poco a la inversa. En el sentido de que si tienen una palabra que comienza con S y después de esa S hay una consonante, Ahora, lo que hay que hacer es arrancarle esa S de ahí y pegárselo a, a lo que esté detrás. Ahora, como son dos S, vamos a, como me gustó mucho la palabra que usó Jorge la otra vez, vamos a homologar las S. Vamos a hacer una sola, ¿no? Entonces decir, she's storing. No she's, she's storing, sino she's storing. She's storing. Uh -huh. Es lo mismo cuando dicen, por ejemplo, esto, ¿no? ¿Cómo pronunciarías eso? Por ejemplo, este... Mm, Víctor Arevalo, ¿cómo pronunciarás esto? It's still on. It's still on. Uh -huh. Exactamente. O por ejemplo, um, ¿cómo pronunciarías esto, este, hey, Víctor Soto? Hey. From school. From school, exactly. So, do you, you know, do you notice when you say that, so what you're doing is doing this, right? From school. From school. Así, acuérdense que así, así evitan poner una E, porque lo que nosotros queremos hacer siempre es poner una E, ¿no? Que nos dan ganas de decir esto, school, from school. Mm. <laughs> so, yo, yeah, Jorge, yeah, that's a good phrase. <laughs> yeah. Ok, from school. So, try to do always that connection. Mm -hmm. Ok, so, finally, finally, we are... Uh, Let's come here. Okay, so possessive pronouns. Okay, all right. So uh, we're going to explain this uh, as fast as we can. So those are possessive pronouns, and those go those goes at the end of the phrase. It's like in Spanish saying, uh, "Ese es mi coche." You can always use it with. Uh, Possessive adjectives, those are possessive ad adjectives. Those ones right here. My, your, her, his, our, their. Esos les dicen adjetivos posesivos. Esos se usan siempre detrás de algo. My bathing suit, your earrings, your yearly, your shoes, your things, your stuff. Se van detrás de sustantivos siempre, siempre, ¿no? No pueden ir en otro sitio. Ahora... Tú puedes decir, that's my car, o that car is mine. Uh -huh. Siempre tienen dos opciones para decir, that's my car, or that car is mine. Y es como en español decir, ese es mi coche, that car, that, that's my car. Ese es mi coche, o ese coche es mío, that car is mine. Funciona exactamente que en español, cuando dicen mío, ya no viene nada después de mío, ¿no? Tampoco dicen, ah, ese es mío coche. Creo que no me acuerdo en qué idioma sí dicen así, ¿no? Ese es mío, creo que en el italiano. Mío no sé qué. Sí, en italiano es como, como uh -huh. si tú hablaras como muy como hacia ti. Porque cuando dicen yo duermo, es yo dormo. Uh -huh. Exactamente. Sí, me acordé de un poco del italiano, pero el inglés es así, al igual que en el español, tiene que ir al final, ¿no? Después de mío no viene nada. Uh -huh. Entonces, estos son los pronombres positivos. That's mine, that's yours, that's hers, that's his. Mm -hmm. Ours or theirs. You can also have its. No sé por qué no está aquí, pero también tienes its. Pegado sin apóstrofe, ¿no? Its. Entonces, ok. All right. And whose bathing suit is this? It's mine. Ok, whose es de quién? ¿De quién es? Whose. ¿De quién es? Whose, whose bathing suit is this? Ahora, ahí se cambia un poco la estructura. Cuando quieren de quién, de quién es algo, tienen que decir whose y luego de lo que están hablando. Uh -huh. Whose car is this? 
Y luego tienen esta frase, is this, al final. Eso tiene que quedar al final de la pregunta. Entonces, la estructura es whose, más el sustantivo del que se está hablando, más is, más this. Ahora, is this, es cuando hablan de algo singular. Whose car is this? Whose bicycle is this? Whose house is this? Whose work is this? Yeah, it's mine, it's hers. Ahora, la respuesta a esa pregunta, pues lo pueden ocupar con los possessive pronouns. And you can say, ah, oh, it's mine. Yeah, no, it's, it's yours, it's hers, it's his. Esa es la manera más, más rápida y más, más efectiva de hacerlo. O pueden decir esto, ¿no? It's my bathing suit. Aunque aquí están repitiendo, ¿saben? O sea, otra vez bathing suit. Entonces, bueno, pueden decirlo si quieren, pero es más fácil esto para no repetir otra vez bathing suit, ¿no? It's mine. Y otra vez se dan cuenta, whose generally is this? Generally is this, es singular, y luego tienen is this, pues, ah, it's hers, o oh, it's her generally, it's her generally, si quieren, ¿no? O whose clothes are these? Ahora, si el sustantivo es plural, o sea, lo que venga después de whose es plural, ya no dicen is this, sino are these. Uh -huh. ¿Sale? Y ya no tienen tampoco it's, sino their. Their hours. They are ours, o they are ours. Si lo quieren ver así también. Entonces, bueno. Ahora, eso también lo pueden decir así. Who is this car from? Hay otra manera de preguntarlo con el who. Who, el is, el sustantivo, y luego from. Who is this car from? ¿De quién es este carro? También lo pueden hacer con esos pronombres. Pueden decir... Who is... Luego lo dicen inclusive who's... Who's this generally? Uh, who's this generally from? Pueden hacerlo también así. Oye, ¿de quién es esta? Who's... Who is? O... Oh, pues si lo quieren contraer, creo que esa es más común. Who's... Who's this car from? ¿De quién es este coche? Es lo mismo, es exactamente lo mismo, solo que otra manera de decirlo. ¿Sale? Who's are, who are, who is. Ahora, eso de who is solo funciona con singulares. Por eso tienen who's. Who are, who are this? Who are this clothes from? Who are this clothes from? ¿Eh? Si lo quieren decir en plural, pues ya no lo pueden contraer. Tienen que decir, who are, who are these clothes from? Entonces, eh, tienen dos opciones siempre, ¿no? Esta de aquí arriba o esta de aquí abajo. Y ya las respuestas ya dijimos que son con estas, ¿vale? Eh, um, bueno, hay muchas otras cosas que decir de esto, ¿saben por qué? Porque eh, estos le dicen pronombres relativos. Vamos a, vamos a andar la siguiente clase en esto de pronombres relativos, que no es otra cosa que who, que that, que where, que when. Uh -huh. Todas esas palabras con las que hacen preguntas también fungen como esto, como pronombres relativos. Uh -huh. eh, okay. Entonces, bueno, vamos a ver, vamos a andar más en esto la siguiente clase. ¿vale? Eh, mientras tanto, pues, si pueden hacer este ejercicio de acá, Estaría chévere. Es, para, es exactamente lo mismo que dijimos aquí. Tienen que completar las conversaciones con whose y los possessive pronouns. Es decir, estos como respuesta, ¿no? Ok. Entonces, intenten hacer eso y eh, lo vemos con calma. ¿Vale? Bueno, entonces, recuerden, sigan continuando o continúen, mejor dicho, continúen respondiendo recreo y... Recuerden, el examen va a ser el 19, el que sí tiene calificación y todo, ¿no? Entonces, okay. bueno, nos vemos el martes. ¿Tienen alguna duda? No. Not really. All right. So, see you on, see you on Tuesday. Take care. See you. Yeah. Thank you, teacher. Bye. 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 Ok. Ok, déjame... Oh, ¿qué estoy diciendo? No, espera. Ya estamos solos, ¿no? Sí, pero tengo que... Ah, ¿cómo lo pongo aquí? Recording. Espera. Tengo que... ¿Cómo le pongo terminar? Recording this computer.
Okay. So, okay, guys, last class we were doing this part right here. So, if you didn't do it, remember we are going to do it now so we can finish that activity. So, let me share the sound. And, okay, we are going to listen in again one more time and then you need to give me the answer. All right. So, remember, you're going to listen to some descriptions or some, some advice about these three hotels, right? The first one, the cave hotel, the lighthouse hotel, and the spa hotel. And you need to tell me which, uh, which number belongs to each part or to each question right here. Okay. So here we go again. Page 73, lesson D, interesting places. Two, listening and writing. Recommendations. B. Read the advice about staying at these hotels. Can you match each piece of advice with a hotel? Then listen and check your guesses. One. Welcome to the Travel Spot. This week we have reports on three very interesting hotels. First, Lisa Steiner tells us about the Cave Hotel in Turkey. When I arrived at my hotel in Cappadocia, in Turkey, I looked up at my room and thought, uh-oh, how am I going to get up there? You actually stay in caves in the rocks, and you have to climb a ladder to get to your room. It's scary at first, but it's not so difficult. Just be sure to wear flat shoes. One morning, I went to a town nearby to go shopping. It's a great place to buy local crafts, like rugs and jewelry. The prices are very good, too. On the second day, I took a hot air balloon ride, and I really recommend this. It was amazing. You can look down on the landscape and see the whole area. All in all, I had a wonderful time in Turkey, and the Cave Hotel is great if you want something a little different. Two. Next, Roger Bloom tells us about staying in the Lighthouse Hotel in Scotland. The brochure said, come to sunny Scotland, so I came. But it wasn't sunny. That's Scottish weather for you. It's always changing. The Lighthouse Hotel is actually in the house next to the lighthouse, and the rooms are very beautiful and luxurious. And that's good because you spend a lot of time indoors. It's a good idea to bring lots of books and board games with you for those rainy days. And rain jackets, too, if you decide to go out. And you should. The views are fantastic, and you can borrow binoculars from the hotel to watch the dolphins. It's also a good place for bird watching. So, do I recommend the Lighthouse Hotel? Yes, I do, but only if you don't mind the rain. Three. Finally, we hear about Carl Turner's stay at the Spa Hotel in Austria. I usually prefer a camping vacation. You know, sleeping bag and tent. But my wife, well, she's more into nice hotels. So, one weekend in the fall, I agreed to go with her to a spa hotel in Austria. The hotel is a two-hour drive from the capital city of Vienna, and it looks amazing. The buildings look like works of art. It's easy to see why people go there. It's so quiet and peaceful, and the view is fantastic. But it's miles from anywhere, so make sure you take everything you need with you. The spa hotel is a great place to relax or exercise. You can go swimming, walk in the grounds, or just sleep by the pool. We really enjoyed the hot water pools. Just don't spend more than 20 minutes in the water at a time, or you could come out looking bright pink. The rooms were very comfortable, and the food was fabulous. The whole weekend was actually a real treat. So, did I miss my tent and sleeping bag? Not at all. In fact, we're going back there next spring. That's all from the Travel Spot this week. Join us next. Okay, all right, so for the last time. Uh, 
Jorge, number two, it says wear flat shoes so you can climb the ladder to your room. Okay, so that advice belongs to which hotel? The Cape Hotel. The Cape Hotel, exactly. So let's say it's number one, right? Yeah, number exactly. One. All right. Okay, lathered, by the way, means uh, como uh, una, como decir, una colina, I think. Mm -hmm. The ladder, una colina, un, un precip, no un precipicio, pero un desnivel, pues, ¿no? Just ladder. Okay, so, Rebecca, number three. How would you read number three and which is the answer? Be sure to take everything you need. It's miles from another town. It's the number three, the spa hotel. Spa hotel, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right. And, okay, and it's el... Number four, how would you read number four? I really recommend the hot air balloon ride, right? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I think it's number one. It's number one, exactly. Yeah, it's number one. Okay, all right. And okay, Jorge, again, number five. Uh, don't spend too much time in the water. Uh, I remember uh, it's the, the, the spa hotel. Exactly. Yeah, the spa hotel. Yeah, very good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. It's this one, number three. And finally, Rebecca, number six. It's a good idea to have some binoculars to watch the dolphins is the lighthouse room, one of the lighthouse hotel. Sorry. Exactly. Yeah, perfect. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, that was great. Exactly. So, uh, okay, uh, binoculars, well, that's quite obvious. Mm, hot air balloon ride. Hot air balloon ride, it's like, you know, those big balloons and you can take a ride on. Those are air hot air balloon and yeah okay i think that's that's it and all right so okay so the last class we also said that you were going to analyze this uh text right here this one right here okay so if you didn't do it uh well we are going to read it anyway so well um uh, so rebecca how would you read this last um this last text, paying attention to the connections in, in it. I re read the whole thing, no. Yeah, the whole thing, yeah. Okay, Giraffe Minor Nairobi, yes. Mm -hmm. Nairobi, when we ask the owners of this African hotel, what, do you, what should we pack, they say, don't forget to bring ya a camera. It's good to know. From the elegant rooms of this beautiful manor, you have superb view of the Nong Hills. Not only that, but a, a herd of giraffe li lives on manor and don't have to try hard to get a great photo. The giraffes wander around the poke their heads through the bedroom windows. They even turn up at the breakfast table too. I think I I read terrible, but, but sorry. No, uh, that, that, that was great. That was great. You did the connections. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was great. This African, you said this African hotel, that was perfect. Mm -hmm. The owners of this hotel. Yeah, you did great. You did it great. Remember, it's a work in progress. Right, it's a work in progress, it's fine. Okay, all right, thank you, Rebecca. So, Victor, Victor, how are you doing? Good morning. Good morning. Okay, Victor, so now you're here, please, how would you read the whole text, uh, paying attention to the connections we, we learned in the previous class? How would you read this part? Um, okay. When we ask it, uh, the owners of this African hotel, what shall we pack? Say, they say, don't forget to bring a camera. It's good to know 
from the elegant rooms of this beautiful manor. Uh, manor. Huh? Uh, manor, you have uh, superb views. Superb views of the Gong Hills. Not only that, but a uh, hair face leads on the manor. And you don't have to try hard to get to get a great photo. The hero first, um, wander around and pop their heads through the bedroom win windows. They even turn, turn up turn up at the breakfast table too. Okay, exactly. Mm -hmm. They turn up at the breakfast table too. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, Victor Adeval is coming. So Victor Soto is here. Okay, and Victor, Victor Adeval. Bye. Okay, mm -hmm. that was great. So I'm going to mark the connection so it's more obvious to you. You did, you did it great, but all right. So we, the owners of this African, this African hotel, mm -hmm. but it's late. No, don't worry, Victor Adevalo, it's fine. This African hotel, so they said, don't forget to bring a camera. To bring a camera, it's good to know from the elegant rooms of this, from the elegant rooms of rooms of this beautiful manor, you have superb views of, okay, superb views, views of, aquí está el sof, no? Superb views of the non hills. Not only that, not only that, but a, but a heard of, but a heard of Europe's Lives on the main, okay. Lives on the manor, and you don't have to try hard to get a great photo. To get a great photo, the giraffes wander around, wander around, around. Ahí tienen que pagar esto, no? Wander around and poke their heads. When poke their heads through the bedroom windows, okay. They even turn up at turn up at. They even turn up at the breakfast table too. Okay, all right, so those are the connections there. So, uh, Jorge, how would you read this, this text, paying attention to those connections right there? Okay, uh, here have minor neighboring. When we ask it, the owner of this African hotel, what should we pack? They they say don't forget it to bring to bring a camera. It's good to know <clears throat> from the elegant room of the this beautiful manor. You have superb views of views of the no hills. Not only. That but a head of giraffes lives, lives on the minor, and you don't have to try hard to get a great photo. The the giraffes uh, wander all wander around and poke their hats. From the bedroom windows, <clears throat> they even turn up, turn up, uh, turn up, turn up at the breakfast table too. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. All right. And okay, it's cell. How would you read that part? Okay, Giraf Maynard. Nairobi. When we ask the old nurse of this African hurdle, what should we what should we pack? They say, don't forget to bring the camera. It's good to know. From the elegant rooms of the beautiful manor, you have two super views of the, the known hills. Not only that, but but a hair of giraffes lives on the manor, and you don't have to try too hard to get a to get a great photo. The giraffes wander wander around and the poke their their heads through the bedroom bedroom windows. They even turn up at the breakfast table too. 
That was perfect. That was great. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Tell. That was great. So, Jose, how would you read the same part? Um, sure. Uh, Giraffe Manor, Nairobi. When we ask the owners of this African hotel, what should we pack? They say, don't forget to bring a cam camera. It's good to know. From the elegant rooms of this beautiful manor, we have super views of the known fields. Not only that, but a pair of giraffes, giraffes lives on the manor. And you don't have to try hard to get a great photo. Uh, the giraffes wander, on, wander around and poke their heads uh, throughout the bedroom windows. They even, they even turn up at the breakfast table too. Okay, all right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, and finally, Victor Arevalo, finally, how would you read that part? Giraffe Manor, Nairobi. When we ask the owners of this African auto, what should we pack? They say, don't forget to bring a camera. It's good to know. From the elegant rules of this beautiful manor, you have super views of the Gone Hills. Not only that, but a hair of giraffe lives on the manor, and you do have to try hard to get a great photo. The giraffe went around and popped their heads throughout the bedroom's windows. They even dropped at the breakfast table too. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. Something that I noticed because I have problem with that too, it's that part right here, right? Wander around, wander around. That part, it's difficult because you have two arts together. Rush, rush around. Mm -hmm. Entonces, por cierto, cada vez que tengan esto, cada vez que en el connected speech se creen dos R's, hay que prestar particular atención a eso, ¿no? Porque nos cuesta trabajo decir dos, dos R's. Entonces, a mí también me cuesta, ¿no? Yo digo wander around. Algunos de nosotros dijimos wander around. Entonces, wander around. Ra round. Son dos R's, ¿no? Ra ra. Suena como chistoso. Ra round. Pero hay que hacer eso. Wander around. And you don't have... Okay, so, always when you have uh, something like this, you have the verb do or don't, like in this case. So, remember, these and these, right? So, in that case, you have a, a U, and then you have an O and you have a D in the middle. So if you want, remember, it's not like mandatory, you can choose, but it's easier to say, you don't, you don't have, you don't have to try, right? It's more, it's easier than say, you don't, I mean, you can say you don't if you want, that's fine, there is no problem with that, but it's easier, it's a little bit easier to say you don't. So remember that, that was great. Okay. So, the manor, beautiful manor. Okay, uh, turn up, turn up, by the way, means aparecer. Bueno, bueno, aparecer en el sentido de venir. Turn up is like come or arrive. Turn up is the same as saying arrive or the same as saying come. Mm -hmm. It's the same. You can use come, arrive, or turn up. All right. I don't remember the meaning of manor. Does anybody have... An idea what is a manor, I think, by the context, is like the patio, no? By the context, but we should we should know exactly what the word is that. Thing is, yeah, uh, teacher Miguel, it's manor, is patio? Mansion. Mansion, okay. It's a very large building, um, it's a very large uh, construction. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. So the manor, all right. And through, through remember, is... A través de, no? Ay. Through the windows, or through the bedroom windows. Uh -huh. Okay. Superb, it's como maravillosos, no? That was superb, superb views. O espectaculares, mejor dicho. Superb. Uh -huh. Vistas espectaculares. Okay. All right. I think that's it. And what else? All right. Okay, so it's uh, 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 uh. 
Okay, I think we can move on to the next part of the book, which is, uh, where is it? It's right here. Okay, um, some tips. Remember, there are many ways in which you can uh, set up your vocabulary. Mm -hmm. This is one of them, writing notes about nouns. Yeah, because nouns are the largest part of the language. We need to be clear on that. You have a lot of nouns, I mean, thousands of them. So you can always make some comments in your notebooks. Mm -hmm. So for example, you can see sunscreen, which is uncountable or countable. Mm -hmm. It's pronunciation and stress. Okay, yeah, so you can take notes on how to pronounce some phonemes. Remember, what it says here is whenever you have a word that begins with PH or ends with PH, the sound, the phoneme there, like it says here, is an F. So whenever you have words that begin with PH, so you're going to uh, make them or you're going to, uh, yeah, you're going to build them up with an F. That's why you say phrase, or that's why you say uh, photo, right? So you have an F photo, and you need to start noticing these patterns in the words, patterns like whenever you have, not always, but most of the time when you have words like these ones, like meat, seat, or uh, meat, seat, lead, right? You need to start noticing these patterns. Whenever you have a word that have e, I mean a, e, ya, todas las palabras que tengan e, ya, bueno, no todas, pero un gran número de ellas hacen un sonido de e. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes you, when you have words that have two o's, two o's, like foot or mood or, or foot or what else? Uh, look. Mm -hmm. Not, I mean, not always, but most of the time when you have two O's, the phoneme of those O's is U, food, mood, look, right? So you can, you can start noticing those uh, patterns, patrones. It's always useful. Mm -hmm. So not always, but when you have words with double E, like C or like what else? Uh, C, B, or uh, meat, right? Or meat. It's always a knee. I mean, not always, but most of the time is a knee. C, B, meat, U, E, right? Or F. And you need to start organizing your vocabulary in a more effective way. So you can do always, you can always do that. But okay, all right. Uh, okay. Mm, yep. And remember, remember, if the best way to learn vocabulary is by collocations. That's the best way of doing it. Mm -hmm. Learn collocations, as much collocations as you want or as you need. That's the only way. When you have a certain level, you need to start learning words word by word. Mm -hmm. You need to pay more attention to complete phrases, like, like the ones we have seen here, which is have a look at it, right? You need to have a look at it. Have a look at, that's a whole phrase, right? Or going... I'm going bad, I'm going crazy. Mm -hmm. Complete phrases. And okay, I think that's that's most of the thing here. And okay, all right. So, so I think we went, now we can move on to unit eight, which is at home, right? And it says here, in this unit, you learn to talk about where you keep things at home, say who owns things with mine, yours, and whose. Okay, so this unit is about things at home and a lot of vocabulary and phrases and grammatical structures which, which have to do with, which have to do with home, okay? So, uh, but let's begin by saying, 
Uh, Jorge, Jorge, how often, how often do you do you spend time at home? Mm, I don't know. Um, maybe um, how much time? Let's say, let's rephrase that that question. Sure. How much time do you do you spend at home daily? Ah, uh, my my room. <laughs> Your room, but how much time? Mm. 16 Six, hours, maybe. <laughs> 60 hours. 60 hours every day. Oh, sorry. The 12, 12 hours. 12 hours. Approx. <laughs> ah, okay, okay. Counting the night, right? Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. I said 16 hours. Okay, <laughs> that was too much. Okay, okay. That's fine. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jorge. And okay, Rebecca. Tell me, in which situations do you like to stay at home? In which situations particularly? Mm, particularly when it's Sunday and I have to, uh, um, I don't know how to say the laundry, like lavar ropa. What, do the laundry? And I have to do yeah, the laundry. Do the, land the laundry and I like to just stay in, yes, and someday to chill out and this stuff. Okay, all right, okay. Okay, thank you. And Victor, Victor, do you have a special place for keeping things at home? Mm. Not my room. Your room? Okay, all right. Okay, and um, okay. Do you have a certain a certain order for keeping your things, or it's like ah whatever you, you can leave your things whatever you want, or do, do you have a certain order? Whatever, my my, <laughs> my kid and spouse is. <laughs> okay, it's all over around. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, me too. You know, sometimes I lost things because I don't know where I put them or I forget them. So that happens. That's quite, quite common. Okay. All right, Victor. And Victor Soto, do you like being at home, Victor, or not so much? Yeah, I like it. Okay. All right. And how much time do you spend at home per day? Well, uh, working in home office, obviously, uh, uh, spend uh, uh, I don't know almost all the day, all day long, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and you know that's an interesting topic because some people say that home office can trigger can trigger some let's say um, anxiety sometimes or depression. There are some studies about it, you know, and we need to take care of that. So if you are home, if you are doing home office, a good a good advice would be to go for a walk from time to time, you know, and uh, you know that's that's a good advice. Well, mm -hmm. I I guess the the secret to no fall down in depression. Mm -hmm. is change the the room every day sometimes mm -hmm. i work in the garden mm -hmm. and, and maybe mm -hmm. in the living room sometimes in the bed <laughs> okay yeah that's good advice too yeah mm -hmm. and you can also go to a cafe a, a cafeteria right you can work from there if you want that's also good a good idea yeah it's a good idea but uh, at this moment with the uh, pandemic uh, situation is mm. not the uh, best choice. Yeah, and it's not the best choice. Yeah, <laughs> right now it's not a good choice right now because we are in the middle of a wave, right? Yeah. We are in the middle of a wave. Okay, so I'm going to close the session and open it again. Please don't go.